The rip-roaring, high-flying, car-crushing monstrosities entertaining crowds from around the world had a beginning with a man from St. Louis, his nickname Bigfoot for his heavy right foot driving style. Bigfoot himself, Bob Chandler, opened a four-wheel drive shop in 1975 and then had an idea for his truck. Look, I kept putting bigger bigger tires and wheels on it because I wanted to go more places than anybody else. Then I put bigger axles in the truck, okay. Then you don't have enough power, so you gotta put a bigger engine in the truck, right? So you got bigger tires, you get a vicious cycle. Bigger axles again, bigger engine. The North St. Louis County businessman eventually put his nickname Bigfoot on the side of his all-terrain truck. Some in St. Louis might have used the word Hoosier when they'd seen the huge tires on a basic truck frame. In St. Louis, Hoosier is the coined term for redneck. That's, that's some cigar smoking, beer drinking, redneck, put some big tires on his truck, and he's, I'm a monster driver now. <laughs> would have thought some redneck truck with 48 inch tires later growing to 66 inch flotation tires and at times 10 foot tires would become one of the most lucrative industries in the entertainment world and that all started with another idea involving Bob's partner Jim Kramer. I was talking to Jim Kramer one day and I says you know I think we could take this truck and it would drive over a set of cars and he kind of laughed, we laughed at each other. He says, says, I got a friend that owns a farm down here. Let's get a couple junk cars and we'll see if it'll do it. It was Bigfoot's first ever car crush, videotaped and promoted inside his business. Word got out. A motor saw it and says, I want you to do that in front of the crowd. So Bob Chandler took the show on the road to Jefferson City, Missouri. And we went over to a set of cars and the crowd just went nuts and I just couldn't, can't imagine you know, the, the reaction from the crowd. And from that point on, no matter where we go, we had to run over cars, you know, because it was, that's, people seem to like it. The world embraced Bigfoot. And the promoter called us a monster truck. And that's where the name of uh, George, uh, Bob George is the promoter's name and he, was, and he started calling Bigfoot a monster truck and the name stuck the whole industry now is Monster Trucks. With Jim Kramer behind the wheel. You're sitting on the Buck and Bronco because you're like this and you're like this and you got all these inputs that you have to make to make this truck land and you have to do them in a split second. If you don't make the tire inclination right when you land you can roll over. Jim Kramer was the kind of driver that was um, more aggressive than I was and instead of just kind of driving up on the cars he hit them and jump over top of them you know just hit them really hard. Giving rise in the mid 1980s to the era of monster trucks. Others built them to compete with Bigfoot and Bigfoot's amazing feats continued. Bigfoot stayed a step ahead as the leader in technological advancements that revolutionized the monster truck industry. In the 70s, stage one was the first generation monster truck, a factory model pickup customized and modified for the oversized tires and military axles. Then in the mid 80s, Bigfoot evolved into stage two, taking performance to a whole new level in terms of capability and reliability. The technology that the military had, had developed over the years to make their trucks tough, we kind of adopted into the monster truck business. The trucks went from 10,000 pounds to up to 16,000 pounds and sometimes more. They were built heavier and stronger, maybe too strong. We built Bigfoot number seven and the truck was stronger than the driver. So I would go out and I would get hurt and it'd take me a month to recover and the truck's fine. So we, we could fix a truck, we couldn't fix the driver and he said, that's enough of that. We're gonna figure this out. Bigfoot 8 revolutionized the monster truck industry in 1989. Bob Chandler used advancements in computer software design to construct the new generation of Bigfoot. I used to have trouble jumping six cars and now with Bigfoot number eight in the test I was jumping 100 feet with a bomb, just no problem. Boom, jump over and not kill me. You know, it was something to do. I could do it six times in a row. It didn't bother me. I could do it all day. He used AutoCAD, a computer-aided design program, taking the world by storm.
Bigfoot 8 was our first first truck with a tube chassis. That was the first stage three monster truck. Stage three is what everybody runs nowadays. Everybody that runs a monster truck is stage three. Designed by AutoCAD, stage three is defined by the steel tubular chassis. Its degree of triangulation and X bracing for strength and stability. The tubular chassis allows for a frame that gives drivers a greater level of protection. And stage three is known for its stepped up suspension and creation of its triangulated four link system four bars connecting each axle to the frame. When we came out with Bigfoot 8, our driver was Andy Brass, and he was in a race series called TNT, was the promoter, and he just blew everybody away. Totally blew everybody away. There's nobody could even compete with him. And the promoter says, I'm going to disqualify you. He says, I want to give everybody other driver six months to catch up. And Chandler continues to break new ground with today's AutoCAD, successfully decreasing the overall weight of Bigfoot, providing a more powerful engine. Increasing acceleration, speed, and braking, making advancements in suspension, nitrogen gas shock technology, and improved sway bars. In stage three, the engine placement changed from the front of the truck to the center. Bob and his team created a superior beast on 66 inch flotation tires, which is five and a half feet tall. Bigfoot can stay airborne longer, hitting the ground and off again with its 1550 horsepower engine. And they're still finding ways to make improvements as Bob's Bigfoot 21 design is coming to life in his shop with the expertise of Brian Bertoletti. I don't know, man. This cage, I think this one's an inch and a half taller overall anyway. So if we did that, we could shim the bottom. Bigfoot 21 is modeled after Bigfoot 18 because of 18's proven chassis design and nitrogen gas shock system. We're looking at driver placement for more safety and um, just center of gravity issues, trying to get the thing low slung. And the biggest thing on that is shocks. We're, every day we make improvements on shocks. For all of that to come together, it's a constant back and forth between Brian and Bob, making adjustments from the virtual world to the real world, piece by piece. He'll build a model of it on the CAD and then run it through all the different bar locations and give me every angle so that I know if I change the bar from the top hole to the bottom hole, how much that changes my drive shaft angle or my it, it affects everything that goes on. Your shocks are tied to the axle housing, so it also tells you how much your shocks are going to move. It tells you how much driveline angle you're going to have, what your U-joint's going to be doing. So basically, that's where that helps the most. And while 21 is being built, Bob Chandler is designing the future Bigfoot. It's an innovative idea that Jim Cramer came up with and is pushing. I've actually got a new chassis. That's this one here that's not on any truck. And what... Jim comes to me and says what we need is a chassis that's narrower by the shocks because we're restricted now on how much we can steer our wheels because they hit the frame, they hit the shocks. So I made a chassis that's narrower in the back, it's wider in the middle, and narrower in front. So now we can drop the engine up and down wherever we want because it's wider in the center and it's narrower in back so we can move the shocks in can't, and the sway bars in and we can steer it further. That's one of our next projects. You know, we'll go to this, this type of chassis eventually. And also allow us to use maybe a coil over shock, which is probably another three inches in diameter bigger. We need the room. We can't really physically fit that right now. The hope is for this Bigfoot to give the performance of a lifetime. The problem I have right now is finding somebody that can bend the tube. The frame has to be bent out and down at the same time. So that's, that's just a weird configuration. I don't know. Uh, I'm not enough of an engineer to know how to do that. Or, and we can't do it with the equipment we have here. But Bigfoot has proven that it has no limits. Anything is possible. When cranking up an alcohol burning supercharged engine of Bigfoot, you can feel and hear it. Okay, make it go. This could be the future of monster trucks. The quiet truck was not a mistake. Listen, brace yourself for this alcohol burning engine to crank up. Definitely need earplugs for that. Let's rewind. Go. No noise to brace for here. That's because this is Bigfoot 20, the last completed model of Bigfoot. It's a battery powered electric monster truck. 
is the only all-electric monster truck in existence. Bigfoot knows no boundaries. It was Jim's idea too. We're running about 360 volts now, about 700 foot-pounds of torque. The electric is very torquey. And that torque is controlled by a digital programmer where I can set the acceleration angle of it. So even though I mashed the foot on the gas, it's only going to take off as fast or slow as I tell it to. We built this truck with enough componentry in it that it could actually ultimately compete with our other alcohol trucks. That's why he calls it the truck of possibilities. This truck has a capability of 1,600 electrical horsepower. Our alcohol trucks make about 1,550. <laughs> they make about 1,300 foot-pounds of torque, where this electric truck can conceivably make 2,000 pounds of torque. So that tells me it's going to accelerate much faster. It has that capability. But now we're waiting for battery technology to get better. We're waiting for our knowledge of the electricity to get a little better so we can make that step. He's hoping this truck can truly compete in the next couple of years. But they're not going to take it serious until we line up on the starting line with a full-blown alcohol truck and the electric truck beats it. And then they're going to go, wow, what just happened? What was that? In the meantime, Bigfoot 20 is a novelty truck, gaining popularity, getting more requests to entertain and educate crowds. Over here we have the digital controller. Now this little apparatus does a lot. Turn on the main power, you turn the ignition. You have a start sequence. It checks all the electrical systems. Bigfoot has teamed up with an organization called Autism Speaks. Kids with autism who are hypersensitive to noise can now enjoy car crushing monster truck action up close. From the quiet to the thunder of the monster truck arena, the innovations of Bigfoot continue to take huge steps forward, crushing over barriers, jumping ahead of the rest. That's what makes Bigfoot a giant in the automotive world. For Innovations, I'm Kathleen Berger. Yeah.